and gentlemen, this title is not clickbait. I'm not even joking, I have sold the M5. Now there's a lot of people out there probably wondering why I've sold the M5 and they're probably a bit upset. But then also there's probably a load of people out there that are probably like, Brett, you've done the right thing, that car wasn't for you. Now in my last video, I actually revealed that I bought this Passat, which is kind of my daily, but it kind of came at the right time because it was gonna be my daily with the M5. But then the M5, I sort of, the opportunity came up to sell it so now this is, I'm, I'm kind of glad I got this as a daily because now it's my only sort of runabout and I'm going to use this for the time being. So what I'm going to do in this video is sort of run over a few reasons as to why I've sold the M5. Now I know I shouldn't have to justify myself but at the same time I want to be a bit more honest now and like I was never not honest before but I feel like there's a few things that happened in my life that I didn't really explain to you guys so it sort of got you questioning where has this gone, where has this gone. Like when I had the smart car and it just disappeared like I want to show a little bit more about what happens behind the scenes. Another example is when the one Thought he got smashed up and then I just turned up with an M5. This time I want to take my time a little bit, not rush into any sort of car, get you guys to come along the journey, give me opinions and feedback of what car I should get and then, you know, make this kind of more of a community thing and get you guys more involved. And just show the whole process from start to finish, more like a story and just show more what happens in my life and yeah, I hope you other guys understand what I mean. But before we get into the video, comment down below what you kind of think about me selling the M5. Before you sort of hear my pointers, comment down below, is this a good thing that I've done or a bad thing? Like, did you like it or did you not? That's what I want to kind of hear before you hear about sort of the reasonings behind it. So on my phone here... So guys, today's video has been kindly sponsored by Emerald Struts. So Emerald Struts supply automatic boot struts for a lot of cars on the road. For example, my old car, which was an F21 BMW 1 Series, had the standard struts on it, but for some reason, on the key, it had a boot button which didn't do nothing. Basically, it would just like unlock the latch, that was it. It didn't, it didn't pop up or anything. Emerald Struts allow you to install these new struts, which literally take about five minutes, if that. Just plug and play, no coding. And then you can click the key and they'll pop up. That's literally all you need to do. And for the sake of about 70, 80 pounds, honestly, they're a proper cool modification. I remember when I had them on my old car, the amount of times I'd show people them when, when I like show people the car and show off all the, the features of it and stuff like that. The first thing I'd show them is the boot because on a one series, a boot lifting up on its own, pretty rare, I thought. Now I know my M5 had this feature, but for a lot of cars like Ford Focuses, STs, um, E92, BMWs, uh, also Audis, all sorts, they don't have these boot struts, like the automatic ones, so this just allows you to add that feature to a standard car which doesn't have them. So they also do like lanyards, they do stickers, hoodies, beanies, valve cap covers, um, they do like a whole package, uh, t-shirts, lights, grills, all sorts. Now at the moment I obviously don't have a car to use them on, but I have used them in the past, hence why I can recommend them to you guys. Now if you want to pick up anything, be sure to use code BB10 for 10% off at checkout. But once again, thank you so much for Emerald Struts for sponsoring today's video, I really do appreciate it. I'll leave all links and information in the description down below. Anyway, let's get back onto the video. So on my phone here I've got a list, because I sold it about a month ago now, I've got a list of all the reasons because I'm awful at remembering, so I wrote them down, so if you do see my phone, that's what I'm looking at. And also, on the back of my phone, I've got a picture of my um, old 140. Now, this is actually a custom design from Glue Pistons. I'll leave links in a discount code, I believe I've got one, in the description down below. But yeah, they do custom phone covers. I think it looks mint, and I'm going to get one for the next car, because I just think it looks cool. So the first reason why I sold the M5 is because the M5 isn't that relatable. Now, what I mean by that is it's not that popular for my sort of audience that I've got. Like, a peep... People who buy an M5, 90% of them just buy the car and just drive it. But I kind of want to do some modifications on it. Now, there's not many people out there that buy an M5 and go online, go on YouTube and type in, I want to modify my M5. Now, with the 140, because it's sort of aimed, I feel like 140s and 240s and M lights and S3s and that kind of thing are aimed at sort of a younger audience who modify their cars. So with that, there's loads more companies out there for me to work with, for one, and also loads more products. But the M5, I found it a massive, massive struggle to find companies to work with and parts, which, you know, wasn't that great for me being a content creator. Like, I had I had a couple of videos lined up, but the only sort of other parts that I was going to put on the car is a little bit more body kit, potentially a wrap, and some downpipes. That was literally it. And for a content perspective, the, the M140i that I had was pretty much endless. There's so many parts you can get with that. So many companies to work with. They're so relatable. They're everywhere, which for some people isn't a good thing. But for me, being a content creator, if they're relatable, people are searching for them. 
and my videos come up. So it helps me out in that respect. So yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons. Now the next reason kind of falls on the back of the other reason is that it's not, it was never that personal because I didn't do much to it and I couldn't do much to it. It didn't feel that personal, if that makes sense. Like my 140, because I had like the engine cover, the sort of the intake stuff. I did like all the interior and stuff like that and I had loads of videos on it and I get it. I gave it a good detail and just like all the little bits on it that I did, it kind of made it personal to me and I really liked that. But with the M5, it was just like a car that was cool to have, but I never fell in love with it. I never ever fell in love with it. And there's a lot of people who commented on my channel saying, Brett, you don't look like you are in love with that car. Not in a weird way, but you know what I mean. So another main reason is obviously going on to the fact that I didn't love the M5. The thing is, I properly love that M140i. I don't know what it is about it. I know they're popular. I know it's a not even an M car or anything like that. But for some reason, that was just a perfect all-rounder. And I really, really liked it. It did well on the channel. I love being in it. You could go it could go steady in it. It's good on fuel. Like, it was just the all-rounder. And I just had a proper love for that car. Like When I walk away from it, I turn back and go, that looks nice. But I never had that with the M5. So with the M5, I never really did some proper research. So when I went out and looked to buy one... I never really realised their problems. I only realised their problems when I had it on my driveway. I then joined a load of forums and they were like, good luck. Now what I mean by that is, it's a, I bought a 2013 car with, at the time, 65,000 miles on it. I sold it with 71,000 miles on it. But being that sort of high mileage, I know every single car can have problems, but the M5s do struggle with rods and rod bearings. Mostly when they're tuned, I know that, but they do require an awful lot of maintenance and a lot of money to go into them just to keep them sort of reliable. Now, that's one thing with the 140 that I never had. Like, those things, those B58 engines are instructable. They're, I wouldn't say that, but they are proper, proper good engines. So when driving the M5, I was always hesitant. I was very, like, you know, I'd warm it up properly, cool it down properly, which I know you should do anyway, but I was always sort of driving it worrying because i've got no warranty it's got about seventy thousand miles anything could go wrong at any time and if it does go wrong it's very expensive to repair so you always obviously with having no warranty and like that you always had that thing in the back of your mind because the i think they're the s63 engines they're not that reliable and a lot of they have a lot of sort of problems with them but as I said, I didn't really research them too much before I bought it, so I kind of regret that. And next time I buy a car with an engine or a car that I don't really know well, I am going to research it properly because, yeah. But I suppose you live and learn. But overall, with that point, I didn't really like driving around in a car that was like a ticking time bomb, anything go wrong at any time, and you just don't, you don't feel like you can properly enjoy it because in the back of your head, you're just thinking, if this goes wrong, it's stupid to repair. And it, I didn't really get, I didn't really get the sort of, extra pleasure with the extra money I was paying like with the 140 it was super fun to drive it was an all-rounder and it was still pretty cheap to run in compared to like the M5 for example like when it comes to services tires and everything like that it was a lot cheaper so if the M5 was reliable and really gave me that wow factor I wouldn't have mind paying extra for it but it just didn't give me that extra money's worth of enjoyment if that makes sense so I just didn't see the point of keeping it fuel was never really a problem because I had the daily anyway um, maintenance wasn't really a problem because I didn't really have to do anything with it. It did drink a little bit of oil, but apparently that's normal. Um, and obviously I put tyres on it and then sold it. So, yeah, you live and learn. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's sort of a waste of money, but hey-ho. Uh, it was a good selling point, I suppose. But, yeah, I wouldn't have done that if I knew I was selling it. But overall, my sort of, the final outcome of this is it wasn't ideal for YouTube in, for my age my sort of income it just didn't really work out if you're going to buy an m5 you want to do stupid things to it and i wasn't really prepared to do that but for now i just prefer to get the more reliable cars that are more relatable as well good for youtube um and the m5 just wasn't that i just didn't love it but the thing is that car was an absolute beast and a weapon absolutely awesome car just not for me However, I probably would have the F90 M5, but that's like stupid money. <laughs> now, another reason why I went and sold it is because it was coming up to a few bits of maintenance. It needed new rear brakes, according to the iDrive. It also probably could have done with a service. It, the BMW didn't tell you it needed a service, but it, I would have done one because it was coming up to sort of the time where you should do one. And also, my insurance was due to renew, and it was quite expensive. So... Yeah, because of obviously the incident with the 140, it's kind of pushed up my insurance a little bit, but it didn't affect it until my renewal, which is obviously now. So um, yeah, that's another reason why I've sold, it, uh, kind of sold it. Having that extra worry of not being as financially stable as I was before, like I wasn't, 
I wasn't skint skint if you know what I mean but I just would rather be in a better place and there's no point worrying about it so I was like what's the point of having a car and not being 100% happy with it and also be you me thinking I could be in a better place financially so I was like you know what let's get rid of the car and that's what I did and that's kind of that's kind of the decision I made but yeah hopefully you sort of understand my reason behind it I have a feeling there's going to be a couple of people that'll be a bit annoyed and upset um, but there's going to be an awful lot of people that are going to be like, yep, yeah, Brett, you did the correct thing. And that's hopefully what <laughs> I'm going to get in the majority of the comments. So what is next, you're probably wondering. Now, if I'm going to be truly honest, I have no idea. I seriously don't have a clue what's going to be next. Now, what I'm going to do in my next video is I'm going to sit down with you guys and sort of run through sort of my top 10 car ideas. And we'll go through Auto Trader, we'll go through all the spec and everything like that. And then I'll get you to... Get your opinion on what I should get next. But also, by all means, comment on this video. What should I look at in the next video? What cars should I look at to get? Um, I have a few ideas. Um, some of them might involve going backwards in terms of <laughs> going back to a previous car. You guys probably know what I mean by that. But, yeah. Just, I want your opinion, okay? For the minute, I'm in no rush to get a new car. I am in terms of content, but I'm not in terms of my life because I've got this and it's super cheap and I'm, I'm enjoying just driving it. Like, it just doesn't cost anything to run. It's, it's, it's awesome. Next video, we're going to discuss what the next plans are with the channel, which is going to be quite cool. Sit down, you guys, and, you know, we're going to have a proper discussion. I might even do it as a live stream yet. I'm not sure, but that will be coming up in the next video. But, yeah, the M5 is gone, I'm, I'm afraid. So, um... Yeah, I didn't really expect it to go so soon, if I'm going to be honest. I really did like that car. And if it wasn't for YouTube, I'd probably still have it. Because it was a good it was a good car. Other than that, I'm going to stop rambling. And um, I should catch you guys very soon. Make sure you leave a comment down below of what cars, or what your, what your opinion is of this whole situation, and what car should go for next. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching today's video. If you did, go ahead and enjoy it. Make sure you leave a like, rate, and comment, and subscribe. Um, but yeah, the M5 is gone.